What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Akeem Haynes. I'm a two-time Olympian, Olympic bronze medalist, author, motivational speaker, and sports commentator. On my channel, we talk boxing, MMA, track and field, and of course, motivation and encouraging content. If this is something that you enjoy, then I hope that you subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get into the video. Naoa Inouye versus Paul Butler. This one is for all the belts. The winner will walk away as the new undisputed champion in the bantamweight division this one is taking place next week december 13th in japan i'll be traveling next week so i won't be able to get all the videos up next week so i'm going to try to get a head start and do some of them this week but let's get into it let's start with the monster neowa in a way he's coming to this one with a record of 23 wins no losses and 20 wins by way of knockout He's coming off a win in a rematch against Nanito Donaire in which he got the win in two rounds. He took him out in two rounds. This is a guy who many people consider as number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Pound for pound is always subjective, but there is no doubt that he's one of the top fighters in the world today. I think he's a special talent. And I think people would know more about him if he was fighting more on this side of the world, the North American side, and even the European side, because as good as he is, not too many people on this side of the world know about him because, I mean, this guy has the makings to be a big name pay-per-view star, in my opinion. Now, in a way, doesn't just have power shots, right? I think a lot of people just consider him a power puncher, but he's calm, he's patient, he's explosive, quick, and looking to land that shot to his opponent's body. Doesn't matter if it's a headshot or a body shot. He knows how to target an opponent's body with accuracy and precision, right? So whether it's a shot to the body or to the head, or to the chin, you have to be cautious when you're in the ring with him because he'll make you pay if you come in too aggressively or he'll make you pay if you're just waiting there for the fight to come to you. He's going to bring it to you. He's not afraid to let his hands go, but he's very calculated, not a lot of wasted motions in his approach. He's a very good counter puncher with quick reflexes. In his last fight against Nonito Donaire, he made that fight look easy, right? He waited for him to overcommit and caught him with a quick right hand to the temple, and that dropped him the first time. And in the second round, in a way, caught him with a left hook that stumbled him. And Nonito Donaire never got the opportunity to breathe because in a way it was on him right from the jump when he knew he was stumbled and he never got a chance to catch his breath again. He was just taking punishing shots. You might be able to cover from one shot from in but if you let him get off three or four shots at a time, there's a good chance you won't stand, right? You will go down. But in that fight, I mean, Donaire has tremendous heart, but the moment he was fighting off of his back foot and got caught with flurries of shots, he wasn't going to stand up to that power. As I said, in a way, it's very accurate and he's efficient, not a lot of wasted moments. The other thing too that I think in a way does really well is the adjustments that he makes after each fight. In the first fight against Nonito Donaire, both men took a lot of punishment, right? He wasn't defensively responsible in that fight. And you could see some of the changes that he made in the second fight, right? That says a lot about his willingness to adjust and to do something different. He's a guy who doesn't need to rush his attack. The shots, they're going to come. He's going to bait his opponents into putting them where he wants them to be. And he's going to be a step ahead of you, right? So he doesn't need to be overly aggressive. The shots will come. He sets everything up the right way. So I think in the rematch, that was a big statement win against a quality fighter in Onito Donaire. But I think he will be looking to do more of the same thing against Butler, and that's to win in impressive fashion. He said he wants to be undisputed in this division before he moves up to the next division next year. So he'll be looking to not only become undisputed, but to put on a great performance and leave the division in style. But let's talk about his opponent, Paul Butler. He's coming to this one with a record of 34 wins, two losses, 15 wins by way of knockout. After his loss to Emmanuel Rodriguez in 2018, he's been on an eight-fight winning streak. So he's got momentum on his side, and he seems to have found himself in a nice groove. The best fight that I've seen of Paul Butler was his recent one against Jonas Sultan. All his skills in his bag was on full display 
in that fight. He was counterpunching well. He caught Sultan when he was too aggressive. He made him pay. He was throwing punches in flurries and used his feet to keep the fight in the middle of the ring and not get to being sucked in to either corner of the ring. He was defensively responsible that he didn't take too much damage. However, he did get hit with some big shots from Sultan, but he continued to be consistent, continued to push Sultan back and continued to let his hands go. He went in with a very good game plan to be the aggressor, to punch in bunches and not just to throw one punch and that was it, right? He used the jab to open him up, use his counter punching skill, hand speed and got the better of Sultan in that fight. So to me, that was his best performance to date in his career, in my opinion. But that was Jonas Sultan. This is Inoue. He's got his hands full against the three title belt holder Inoue, right? He's coming to this one as the underdog by a whole lot. I haven't seen the betting odds, but I'm assuming he can use that underdog mentality to his advantage, right? But will it work? So who wins? I think Paul Butler is a good, solid fighter, and he does a lot of good things inside the ring. And he's coming in as the underdog, which means that, man, he's got to take some risks because he cannot wait for the fight to come to him because in a way is going to be relentless and punish him if he is too patient and giving in a way too much respect. As the underdog, you have nothing to lose. People are already not expecting you to win. So you have to try and do something to shock in a way, be the aggressor right? Take a risk. You got to take calculated risk against someone who is very patient and he's going to wait till the right time in order to do what he know that he can does best. And that's knock his opponents out. So I think Paul Butler needs to come in and be the aggressor. But there's no doubt that in a way he's more explosive. He's the bigger puncher. He can beat you in more ways than Butler can. Skill wise, in a way has more skills in his bag than Paul Butler does. Not to mention again, the power. I know I've been talking about the power, but you know about the power. 20 knockouts in 23 fights. The power is no hype. It's real. And even if you don't have the best skills, if you have the power, if you have that eraser, that can get you out of trouble. But in a way, has the full package. So I have in a way winning by knockout. And I think this one does not go over seven rounds. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning? Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a couple ways that you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel. It will be greatly, greatly appreciated. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video this long, and do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and we'll definitely see you next time.